A $10,000 Rapture Challenge? What's this about? Well, I'm not the one offering the $10,000, so you know, don't try to find a way to get it for me, because I'm not going to get it for me. But uh, this book right here, Rapture, Prophecy or Heresy by H. Speed Wilson, says here on the back, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. We have here, it says, is there to be a rapture? The rapture theology has been one of the most controversial topics among Christians from the early 1800s to the present. Already we see some lies here. It was, be there, it was being taught before the 1800s. The most commonly addressed question in the popular book, pamphlets, and sermons is, when will the rapture occur? Other common questions include, will the rapture be pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation, and will it be a secret and silent removal of Christians or a glorious return of Jesus? As an astute Bible scholar, no pride there. As an astute Bible scholar, Speed Wilson now raises the question in this new thought-provoking book he feels is the most important and even critical question of all, is there to be a rapture? Topics include rapture support arguments, origin of rapture, what may happen, what we must do, con consequences of the rapture doc doctrine, and your $10,000 challenge. Speed is offering a $10,000 reward to anyone who can, after reading his book, refer to several scriptures clearly stating that the saints, holy ones, righteous church, body, bride, wheat, etc. are taken out of the world. Details on how to receive this reward are presented in this book. Rapture prophecy or heresy reveals some insights never before published and should be helpful to the Christian community to confer not with flesh and blood. You know, yeah. Okay, and here's your uh, uh, moron, uh, oh, excuse me, I mean a Bible scholar here. H. Uh, Speed Wilson you know, he's a, a colonel in the United States Marine Corps there, retired, you know, and, and whatever. And, and, you know, look here, it says, has, uh, Speed has made guest appearances on many well-known Christian programs, Christian programs here. The 700 Club, Pat Robertson, uh-huh. Praise the Lord Club. It's not even around anymore because Jim and Tammy Baker, you know, got busted for extortion and Jim Baker was having zipper trouble and all kinds of stuff. Trinity Broadcasting Network with Paul Crouch, Paul and Jan Crouch. You know, Paul Crouch is having a uh, sodomite relationships with a with a black man. You know, oh yeah, good good shows to be on here. And 100 Hentley Street. He and his wife now reside, I think it says in Pennsylvania or something, underneath that sticker. But uh, we're going to look at this ridiculous book here. You're going to believe some of the stuff in this thing. Just incredible. I'm going to go through it. But I just want to say this real quickly here. What he does with this book is he his uh, standards of truth, you know, he he basically, I, I'm going to play a little game here, kind of to show you how a lot of these Alexandrian people tend to think, all right? I'm going to offer you $10,000, and all you have to do is I want you to hold your hand up to the screen, okay, to the screen of your computer. Just put it right on the screen of your computer. And now I'm going to measure, and if you can get your fingers exactly three inches apart, then I'm going to give you $10,000 in cash, okay? So go ahead, put your fingers up to the screen there. Okay, here we go. See, here's my, there's my ruler. Okay, your, your, your fingers up at the screen there. Oh, sorry, nope, that one didn't work. Somebody else want to try it? Oh, sorry, no, no. Let's try somebody else. Whoa, yeah, you're, you didn't work either there, you know. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. You say, what's your point, Brian? My point is, what Speed Wilson does, he uses 13 different versions that I counted in here, 13 different versions, and then he corrects the ones that he's using. So it's kind of like using a rubber ruler. See? You say, prove me wrong. You have to prove me wrong with the authoritative word of God. He has no authoritative word of God. It's like this. I mean, how can you use this as an authoritative ruler there to measure exactly three inches when three inches can be changed to whatever you want it to be? You see? That's what using multiple new versions, contradicting versions, and then using, you know, the Greek, that's what that does. It's like a rubber ruler is what it is. You know, just crazy. But now let's, uh, we're going to get into this thing, this ridiculous, stupid book here. Okay. Copyright 1989 by H. Speed Wilson, all rights reserved. 
All scripture quotations are from the King James Version of the Bible unless otherwise indicated as follows. And he goes down through, lists all these new versions. There's actually another one in the book. There's 12 here. Another one in the book that I found that is not listed here. So there's a total of 13. Interesting number. Some scriptures have only the key words uh, noted in the, in the text. In the interest of saving space while making a point, however, these are not taken out of context and the readers are encouraged to look up each of these scriptures themselves to see if these things be true. You know, da 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 da, -da you know. <laughs> I mean, you can certainly count on this guy telling you the truth. And I'm going to tell you right now, this H. Speed Wilson guy is a heretic. I mean, I'm talking arch heretic. You know, just incredible. But let's look here. Here you have editor, editor's note. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing because it's just not worth our time. But, you know, just look at some of these key things here. First of all, you have he's proven the point from the Old and New Testament the whole counsel of God's words. So right up front you see he's non-dispensational. Standard operating procedure for all people that teach anything but a pre-tribulation rapture. I have never seen one dispensational preacher that teaches something other than the pre-tribulation rapture. I've never met one. Okay, If you're non-dispensational, you'll go and you'll steal things from the Old Testament, you'll steal things from the Jews, you'll get into replacement theology. They all do. So does Nutty Boy here, you know, every single one of them. They all do it. But let's look here at the thing again. It says, uh, rapture there, righteous shall remain always on the earth. Got to love that one too. The righteous are always going to remain on the earth. This, this wing nut right here actually teaches that no one goes to heaven. I'm going to show you. It's crazy. Then after a month of studying every scripture and word of Speed's book in five versions of the Bible. That's what these uh, editors of this thing did. They studied every word in, in five different versions of the Bible. Like that's supposed to make you intelligent or something, you know. I study the scriptures in five different versions. Okay, then you're wasting a lot of time and you're not a Bible believer. I mean, how can you be a Bible believer with five contradicting standards? But look at this. It says here, the Bible. Now, again, let me just let me explain something. Whenever you see a the in front of a singular word, the is a definitive article. It's defining what follows it. Okay? So you have the singular word Bible. It cannot be referring to more than one. But what these people do, he just got done telling you, this editor guy got done telling you that he studied it in five different versions. How, can they, how then can you say the Bible and the scriptures? Five different new versions? That makes a lot of sense. But check this, check this one out here. A famous evangelist's wife who wrote to a close friend signed by the editors. Wow, that really narrows it down, doesn't it? Uh, why don't you name who it was here? The uh, famous evangelist's wife and a close friend? That could be anybody. I mean, you can certainly have confidence in this book that it's written by a real scholar, a, uh, what do they call this nut here, an astute, astute Bible scholar. <laughs> this guy, you aren't going to believe. I mean, when we were taking our trips up and back to Maine looking for, you know, uh, the property and then, and then the ministry headquarters, um, I had bought this book because somebody had told me about it uh, way back when I was up in uh, northern Pennsylvania there um, in the Bradford area. But uh, somebody told me about this this $10,000 challenge mm -hmm. by Speed Wilson. And uh, and I, they were like, you ought to check into it, you know, and, and things. I'm sure you could answer the guy. And so I bought the book, and it had been sitting around for a while, and I just took it along with us, and we came up, you know, looking for land. And we were staying at a place, and, and uh, in the evenings, I just sat there and read this book. And I, I was just like... This guy is nuts. I mean, you'll see what I mean. And and do I believe he's saved? No, I don't believe he's saved. And you know, people say, "Well, how can you tell? How can you tell?" Well, how can you tell if anybody's saved by the standards of the King James Bible? So, well, maybe they changed. Maybe they didn't. You know, he that is spiritual judgeth all things. We're supposed to judge. 
You say, well, judge not that ye be not judged. Okay, what's saying, what that verse is saying there, Matthew chapter 7, I believe it is, it's actually saying, if you're going to judge people, that same judgment is going to be applied to you. Now, am I worried about somebody judging me about my theology based on, you know, about the rapture? I'm not worried about it at all. Why? I know my beliefs line up with the King James Bible. I'm not afraid of somebody coming along and judging what I teach and preach. I've got hours and hours and hours of preaching on the pre-trib rapture. I'll defend it against anybody. So I can judge, I understand the issue, and I will judge somebody that is trying to speak against biblical truth. And this guy, like I said, this guy is nuts. All right, let's continue here. Page number seven. Here he's talking about rapture, a very important question. And he says about uh, believers here, they may become prime candidates to be in the great falling away of 2 Thessalonians 1, 2, 3, and Daniel 11, 35. Uh, the, the great falling away is already happening. Okay, that happens before the catching away of the body of Christ. Okay, the two things that are that are mentioned there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it's there shall be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. And then it goes on to say that the thing it's withholding the man of sin to be revealed is the body of Christ. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The body of Christ and the Holy Spirit within the body of Christ. And that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is not going to be on the earth for the entire time of the time of Jacob's trouble. It just means uniquely indwelling people as a sealed, you know, having sealed believers down here on the earth. Okay, that's not going to be the case in the time of Jacob's trouble. But, you know, back to the thing here, it says, the living Bible, he quotes the living Bible. Big surprise, you know. Now check this out. This is incredible here. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit more. It says here, to blindly accept the doctrine of a rapture with no consideration of the possibility of God having other plans. Doesn't sound too sure of himself. For his children may be tempting God. Okay. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, refused to tempt God when he said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What? Huh? Jesus didn't, he, he refused to tempt God? Um, hello? Jesus Christ is God. When he said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, he was saying to Satan, Hey, you know who I am. I'm God manifest in the flesh. Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me to destroy you before the time, is what Jesus Christ was doing. To write this is saying that you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. I'll show you more about that later on. Back to the book. Is there to be a rapture? The Word of God, the Holy Bible, the Scriptures. Again, you see a capital W there. This guy is so ignorant of Scripture. Capital W, there are only seven references to a capital W Word of God in the King James Bible. All seven are a reference to Jesus Christ, the manifest Word of God, not the written Word of God. In this passage here, in this sentence, he is talking about the written Word of God. That's a lowercase w. Do your homework there, astute scholar. God's plan is revealed in His Word, the Bible. But He quotes 13 different versions. And by the way, I forgot to show this. One of the versions that He quotes, check that one out. The Jerusalem Bible. That's a Roman Catholic new version. In fact, John Ronald ruled Tolkien, the Lord of the Rings, the author of the Lord of the Rings, an occultist, a Satanist. He was majorly into the occult. I need to, I'm going to be doing a study on him in the future, Lord willing. But uh, he was one of the guys that worked on the Jerusalem Bible. Very interesting. But we'll continue here. Page 11. The rapture doctrine is one of the most divisive of modern day doctrines. Absolute truth. Absolutely. Truth always does divide people. Okay. Jesus Christ himself so that he came to bring division. But these people, these uh, papists like this, these closet papists, you know, 
they, they have this, this idea that we should all just come together and put aside our differences. That's not Bible-believing Christianity. Here we have uh, page 12, the prophetic words of Jesus. We have to accept the fact that the word rapture does not appear in the text of any Bible. Yes, we've heard that argument so many times. The word rapture is not in the, the King James Bible. And I actually had a guy say that to me the one time, and I said, so then you don't believe in a pre-trib rapture? And he said, no. And I said, uh, do you believe in a post-trib rapture? Yes, I do. I said, well, what just changed? The word rapture doesn't appear in the, in the King James Bible, so you can't prove a pre-trib rapture with the word rapture, but I can po prove a post-trib rapture with the word rapture. Huh? Now, of course, we're going to start seeing some of the uh, non-dispensational things. He's jumping all over the Bible here to try to prove the post-trib rapture. Here you have Hebrews. There you have Matthew 17, 5, Matthew 24, the infamous Matthew 24, verse 3. We'll be talking more about this later. Up here, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, all written to Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Then here he says, uh, why would Christians have to know much about the end? end of time and the great tribulation if we aren't going to be there. <laughs> okay, um, here's a news flash for you there, uh, Speed Wilson. Uh, maybe I should call you Slow Wilson. Here's a news flash. The whole Bible isn't written to Christians. Okay, just a small portion of the Bible is written to Christians. The things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. I know that. Yeah, sure. But doctrinally, a lot of the Bible is not written to a Christian. Continuing on here, page 14. The King James Version and Revised Standard Version incorrectly translate vultures as eagles. And then he goes on to explain that, you know, vultures eat dead flesh and things like that, you know, so it would be much better vultures and things. Uh, again, um, Eagles eat dead flesh too. Okay? And I think that uh, 54 of the best scholars that have ever lived uh, probably knew a little bit more about translation than uh, Speed Wilson. I'm sure he was an expert, though, as a, as a U.S. Marine Corps, you know, uh, colonel. I'm sure he was, in, you know, on the same level as the 54 scholars who translated the King James Bible over a period of seven years. I mean, if only if you know, Speed Wilson would have been back there in that time, you know, they, he could have straightened those, those poor 54 scholars out that were writing dictionaries in Persian and, you know, writing their own devotional books in Greek and Hebrew and tutoring the queen and things like that and writing and reading and writing Hebrew at the age of five years old. And Boy, those guys sure didn't know very much back then, did they? Page 17. To understand this, we must establish who is referred to as the elect. The following scriptures make very clear that the elect can be no other than the true biblical believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. The elect, down here he says biblical believers. Let me just show you a verse of scripture here. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The elect here in the passage, are they saved? You say, well, of course, they're biblical. They are biblical believers. Uh, no, actually they're Jews that are lost. I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Speed Wilson is a believer in replacement theology. You say, I need to see more proof of that. Okay. Here we have page 18. The elect are Jewish evangelists. Rather, these passages are believed by all to include all believers. So the pre-trib rapture will not survive when exposed to the light of Scripture without a lot of explaining and interpreting and juggling of terms. Yeah, kind of like this stupid book here, you know. And it does survive, by the way. It does just fine. So again, there, he's ripping on the Jews. Look down here. He that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Not the Jew. Why not? Even if you want to say this is just people, just a general application to anybody, 
in the time of Jacob's trouble, even if you want to make that argument, wouldn't the Jews be included in that? Why is he attacking the Jewish people? Very serious thing messing with the Jews. Then he goes, of course, Strong's Concordance there, word number 4982. Don't mess with the Strong's Concordance, okay? It's based on a corrupt uh, Greek text, the majority text, not the Textus Receptus, but the majority text. It's a big story. Again, another video coming out in the future, Lord willing. But uh, down here it talks about the tribes. He's quoting, you know, here in, in uh, Matthew what, or Mark. I'm not sure where he's quoting there. But, uh, you know, he's quoting and talks about the tribes. Here again, not when the Jew shall see all these things. Matthew chapter 24. It's not the Jew. We're going to see about that. Over here on the next page, wonderful promise from God's Word in the Amplified Bible. What a joke. I mean, I don't know anybody, any serious student of Scripture that uses the Amplified Bible and takes it seriously. The only good you know, use for uh, the Amplified Bible is for you know, some kicks and giggles. You, know. you need a good laugh, you know, open up an Amplified Bible and look at it. Absolutely incredible. Chapter 3, the Law, the Prophets, and the Psalms. In John 10.35, Jesus assures us that the Scriptures cannot be broken and that will not disagree nor be in contradiction. Okay, so here he's trying to overthrow dispensational teaching by saying that the Scriptures do not contradict. Uh, I really hate to tell you, but the Scriptures contradict like crazy if you're non-dispensational. I mean, Jesus Christ, made of a woman, made under the law. Jesus says to his disciples, don't go out into the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Paul goes in and he says, I'm called to be the apostle to the Gentiles. That's a contradiction. No, it's two different dispensations. And if you try to blend the whole thing together and say, Jesus, when he came down, they were preaching the same gospel that we preach today and the, and the gospel that's always going to be around. That's a lie. That shows your ignorance of Scripture. All right? How could Jesus preach the death, burial, and resurrection when he hadn't died on the cross yet? And why did he tell people to go to the priest and show yourself to the priest and do the sacrifice required by Moses? It's bad. Page 20. It is difficult to understand, but there are some who insist that the Old Testament is not for Christians. And he quotes the uh, Word of God here, and it's NIV, NIV. You know, and up here, NIV. What about 2 Timothy 2.15? He doesn't understand 2 Timothy 2.15. Why? Well, because he's lost, but, you know, also because he's not an astute Bible scholar. <laughs> Incredible. You say, I just can't believe it. It's difficult to understand why there are some who insist that the Old Testament isn't for us today. Okay, the Old Testament is for us today. We'll just go along with this line of reasoning. Go to your local Levitical priest and ask him what animal you need to sacrifice to atone for your sins. In the Old Testament, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Continuing, let us see what we can learn from the whole of God's word about a rapture from the law, the prophets, and the Psalms in the Old Testament. Uh. Yes, let's go back to the Old Testament to try and prove whether or not there's a rapture of the body of Christ. This guy's incredible. Page 25. More than two dozen scriptures uh, quoted in this chapter make it as clear as it can be stated that the righteous will remain in the world and the wicked will be destroyed out of the world. Can you find two dozen scriptures that state as clearly that the righteous will be removed from the world in a rapture? Can you find one? Remember, clearly is the key word. You know, let me, you know, remember, uh, clearly, clearly is the key word, folks. It has to line up. It has to be measured, you know. Uh-huh. It has to clearly state it, and you can use 13 different versions to find it. And go back to the Greek whenever you can't agree with any of the 13 versions. 
Mm -hmm. Incredible. Ezekiel 9, verses 4 through 6. Again, quoting things in the Old Testament. All right. Does the New Testament agree with this? Revelation 9, verses 3 and 4. Again, what was happening in here is a type of what will happen in the future. But this is not the same event. This guy has no idea of what's going on. God's Word speaks ever so clearly in 13 different versions. You know. <laughs> okay. Check this doozy out here. This one's incredible. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers and was put in prison on false charges by the Pharaoh's wife. Uh, no. I have here Pharaoh's wife. Wrong. Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, Genesis 39, verse 1. <laughs> this guy doesn't even know the Bible for crying out loud. You know, it wasn't Pharaoh's wife that put him in prison. If believers were raptured out of the world, there would be no such witness on the earth to draw multitudes to a saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what about Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses? What about the 144,000? What about people that are going to get saved in the time of Jacob's trouble? You don't have to have Christians around in that time for people to get saved. It's ridiculous. Page 32. Jesus went through it all as an overcomer, as an example for all biblical believers. No rapture out of or before his tribulations on earth. This is another one you got to watch out for. You know, uh, Jesus came here and, and he didn't escape, you know, the cross and, and he overcame things. And so we're going to have to do, see, what is that? Catholic. That's Roman Catholic. We need to be fellow sufferers with Jesus. We need to take up our cross and suffer so that we too might merit salvation. That's what they teach. That's exactly what they teach. Let's look at the next page here. Page 33. You can search the scriptures, both Old and New Testaments, and you will not find any one of God's chosen elect being raptured out of their times of testing tribulation. How about Enoch, Enoch and Elijah? They were raptured out. It says here, the scriptures make it repeatedly and abundantly clear that rapture is not God's way. God has never taken raptured anyone of his out of their times of testing tribulation, and he assures us he will not, for I am the Lord, I change not. <laughs> oh, brother. You know God's way and can choose whether to continue in the rapture belief. Oh, this guy is so ignorant. It's just incredible. I just gave you two examples. Enoch and Elijah both were taken out before they died. And Enoch especially was taken out before the flood happened. But there's never any mention. So now you know God's way. You, if you continue in the rapture belief, that proves that you're rebelling against God kind of thing. You know here. No, it proves that you understand Scripture. Page 35. So perhaps there is something wrong with the rapture understanding and interpretations of 1 Thessalonians 4.17. The answer could be in language translation from Greek to English. Yeah. You know, and see again we have this scholar, this, you know, U.S. Marine Corps scholar, you know, and, and he's so much more educated than the 54 translators of the King James Bible. I mean, I keep going back to that, but you know, look at the lives of these men who translated the King James Bible. Just unreal. You know, I mean, some of these guys, you know, I, I don't have all their names memorized and things, but look up their biographies, you know. I mean, there, there was one guy, he'd go on vacation to some other country to learn the language. And three months he'd come back having a language mastered. Not being able to speak it when he went. Okay? I mean, these guys were incredible scholars, and they spent seven years translating the King James Bible, and this nut here comes out and he says, well, it's obviously a mistranslation. This obviously could be done better. Sure, it could. Page 36. I love this one, too. However, it is a fact that the King James Version of the Bible was translated from the Roman Catholic Latin Version of the Bible. And, you know, now here, I'm sure that he's right on this one, okay? And to prove that he's right... Just look here at the footnote. 
you know, because it's a fact that the King James Version was translated from the Roman Catholic's Latin Bible, you know, of Jerome, the Latin Vulgate. You know, it's a fact, okay? It's a fact. So, you know, it's footnoted right here. Um, let, me, let me look for it here. Uh, um, huh. I can't seem to find the footnote to prove this uh, fact. That's because it's not a fact. It's a lie. A total, complete lie. The King James Version was not based on Jerome's Latin Vulgate. Okay? The King James Version was based on the majority of extant Greek manuscripts. And there are many places where, you know, I mean, the, the, where, you know, there were translations, other foreign language translations used. They, you know, I mean, they had access to the, the two great, you know, oldest and best manuscripts, you know, Codices B and LF. They had those things available, those types of readings and things. I mean, they had multiple Greek texts. They had all these different things. Huge amounts of resources. But it's a, it's a fact that it's based on the Roman Catholic Latin Vulgate. Again, this guy is so ignorant. It's incredible. Page 39. So we see if there was to be a rapture, the people's heads would go no higher than about 10 feet above the earth's surface, no higher than you can throw dust into the air. And what he does is, back here, I have here, off we go into the, into the Greek la-la land. Um, but uh, here he goes in, he's, he's all this Greek, 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 Greek. And he basically says that the being called up into the air, to meet the Lord in the air, you know, it just means the kind of the atmosphere where we're at right now. No higher than 10 feet above the ground. Say, is that guy really that stupid? Yeah. And check this one out. It gets even better. In the clouds, in the following scriptures, the divine, the divine cloud came down to earth. So when we get caught up there at the rapture to meet the Lord in the air, you know, and be in the clouds there, it just actually means here on the earth. I mean, those those white puffy things up there in the sky that you see on a on a sunny day, you know, those aren't really clouds. They're just sky puffies, you know. On the earth here is where the clouds are. Page 40. But the most appropriate for the 1 Thessalonians 4.17 cloud is Hebrews 11.36 through 12.2. Okay. And there it talks about the uh, cloud of witnesses. You know. So what he's trying to say is that when we go meet the Lord in the clouds, you know, that that's actually just, you know, a cloud of witnesses. A lot of people that's going to be there. Okay. <laughs> when the Bible clearly is saying we go up, which I'll be talking about later on. This guy's a nut. Page 40, in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, this great cloud of witnesses are at long last. In Revelation 6.10, 10, we find the spirits of these departed saints crying, How long, O Lord, having their spirits returned to the earth with Jesus, to be united with their resurrected bodies, to be made perfect with those who are alive and remain on the earth, all this taking place at Christ's second coming. Okay, we're going to see why that doesn't work out later on. All right. Trying to say, well, yeah, the, you know, the spirits go up, but the bodies stay down, and they never go up to heaven. Wrong. We're going to see about that. Now we get into the thing here. He'll change the word of God. When it clearly says Trump, he'll put the E-T. See, trying to mess it up. At the last, Trump, it... And notice what he's doing too here. He's, he's quoting King James Version, but then he's adding scriptures. Adding scriptures. Right there. All these words that are not in the bold print there, they're added. What did the Bible say about adding to the Word of God? Hmm. I like this one too. In passing, it is interesting to note that there was a resurrection of saints in Matthew 27, 52, after his, Jesus' re resurrection. The graves of the dead, or he adds again to the word of God, were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept, arose, and came out of the graves, and after his resurrection, 
and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now look at this. Notice they were not seen streaking through the sky and root to heaven singing, I'll fly away, O glory. That's something else these post-tribbers will do. They'll, they'll make fun of the rapture, you know, and the fun of the resurrection. You know, it's ridiculous. But uh, here's my question. Those Old Testament saints that came out of the graves, and there in Matthew chapter 27, where did they go? Did they go back down into the graves again? Are they still alive today on the earth someplace? I mean, after they were resurrected, what happened to them? Uh, here's a clue. They went to be with the Lord, the first part of the resurrection. First fruits there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the first fruits. And after that comes the harvest the rapture of the body of Christ. And then the gleanings, the third part of that rapture, the first resurrection, happens there at the end. The first resurrection is not over until the millennium. But whatever. Page 44. It says here, Notice it is forever that we shall be with the Lord in the air on the surface of the earth and not in heaven. Okay. See, what this guy does he sets up a false argument, a false platform, and then he tries to establish doctrine on that thing. All right? The guy's such a liar. He tried to say, well, the atmosphere there, the air, is just our atmosphere right here, like what I'm breathing right now. And so I've proven that. And uh, the clouds there, it's not actually clouds in the sky. It's actually a cloud of witnesses here on the earth. So therefore, I've proved this, this fact that we're going to be on the earth. No, you didn't prove anything other than your own ignorance of Scripture. Look at this. This is good, too. The next page, page 45. You have a soul, which is your mind, will, intellect, and emotions. I really hate to tell you, but your soul is not your intellect. Pretty bad. Okay. Page 46. By now, we could say the rapture has been canceled due to lack of supporting scriptures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure, buddy. Rapture support arguments. And then he goes, he's starting to say some ones here, and he says, These verses and others make it so very clear that the terms saints, body of Christ, and church are the same people and are synonymous terms. Okay, here's another one of these little games that these post trippers play. They'll say, Well, see, we're called saints, and there are saints mentioned in the book of Revelation in the time of Jacob's trouble. So therefore, how could we be in heaven if the saints are still on the earth? Ah, this doesn't prove anything. There were saints in the Old Testament before Jesus Christ died on the cross. Saints is a generic term for saved people in any dispensation. All right? But see, you got to blend all this stuff together. you got to get rid of the distinctions. Make it all one. Funny, isn't it? Because you have the Antichrist movement saying, let's get rid of national boundaries. Let's get rid of national distinctions. Let's get rid of religious boundaries. Let's all come together and form a new world order. And that's exactly what these non-dispensational post-tribbers do. Let's get rid of the distinctions in the Bible. Let's not have any distinctions. No dispensational differences. Let's all bring it, let's bring it all together. Let's all join hands, you know, and sing Kumbaya around the campfire. Page 48. Again, the saints' church body of Christ are still here on earth for the display of God's power. See, again, you know, the saints, yes. Church is a called out assembly, but the word church isn't in these, in these passages here that he's going over. And the body of Christ is left. But see what he's doing here? He's deceiving people. It's just disgusting. But it says here, the rapture believers have the saints raptured out of the world before the beast and his worldwide system is established. See? So here he's saying all three of these things are synonymous. Why doesn't he quote all three of them down here? See? See, this, this is deception, people. This is not a coincidence. Church, body of Christ, that is raptured out. But people in the time of Jacob's trouble are still saints. But he just puts saints down here and not church, body of Christ down here. This guy is such a liar. 
Next page. Maybe this book will awaken them before it is too late, and the bridegroom has come, but some were not ready. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So not up, you know, not up. Well, yeah, this is Matthew 25 is not about the rapture. It's not about the rapture. It's talking about Jesus Christ coming back down to rule and reign physically on the earth and then being taken to the judgment of nations, which happens later on in the chapter of Matthew chapter 25. It has nothing to do with the rapture. All right. Continuing. The list of the 12 Hebrew tribes in Revelation 7, 4 through 8 shows only 12,000 of the tribe of Judah, not 144,000. Yeah, I just read that right. I'm not misquoting this crazy nut. Let's look here. Revelation chapter 7, verse 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed and hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah, twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. The list shows only 12,000 of the tribe of Judah. Huh? Not 144,000. And 144,000. Again, continuing here, the rapture teachers would have all the world saved by 144,000 or 12,000 Jewish evangelists in seven years. When hundreds of millions of dedicated Bible, biblical believers and evangelists have not been able to do it in nearly 2,000 years. Huh? Um, rapture teachers want people to believe that the whole world's going to be saved by the Jewish evangelists. Can you please document one rapture teacher that's ever taught that, please? This guy's nuts. The vast majority of the world takes the mark of the beast and goes to hell in the time of Jacob's trouble. I've never heard one person say that the 144,000 Jewish, you know, sealed Jews are going to go out and evangelize the whole world and the whole world gets saved. I don't know anybody that teaches that. never even heard that before I read this crazy nuts book. Page 49, Paul clearly stated here that there was no longer a distinction between Jew or Gentile. We are all in Christ, the elect of God. Mm -hmm. In terms of salvation, yes. In terms of salvation, yeah, there is no, neither Jew nor Greek. I agree with that. But the fact of the matter is, in terms of national privilege, in terms of national prophecy, there's a big difference between the Jew and the Greek. A huge difference. But Speed Wilson doesn't know about that. Continuing, page 51. The scripture they most often quote is 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. God did not appoint us saints to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's actually what the King James Bible says. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Notice here, he changes. And he's saying that, you know, all scripture, that's unless it's otherwise noted, it's from, you know, the King James Bible. This isn't King James Bible. First of all, he takes out four. You know, God hath not. He replaces hath with did. Hath not appointed us to wrath. Appoint us to wrath. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ as opposed to by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at this. This is a beautiful scripture, and interestingly enough, the word obtain is defined thus. Obtain, to get possession of by trying. Uh-oh. We have work salvation being taught. You have to endure to the end. You have to try to be saved. See? Oh, boy. Now look down here. Tribulation, which perfects the saints taught by every Catholic out there. 
be a co-redeemer, a co-sufferer with Jesus Christ. Join your sufferings with his sufferings. And if you die, you know, you still go to purgatory. You get to burn down there for a while to suffer and merit your salvation. It says here, then in Revelations, Revelations, I always hate it when people do that. Chapter 7, we read that whosoever is alive at the time of tribulation, or whoever, uh, will receive a seal mark of God before he releases his angels to destroy and hurt. Whoever is alive at the time of tribulation? No, it's actually the... Uh, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. I mean, realize the deception here, ladies and gentlemen. Realize this guy is either so filled with devils or he's, he's just lost his mind or something. But look at this. Here you have whoever is alive at the time of tribulation is going to be sealed or marked of God. Whoever is alive. Right here he quotes scripture, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. He actually is contradicting himself in the same paragraph. That's how nuts this guy is. You know, if you're watching there, Speed Wilson, keep the $10,000 and get some help. All right? I think you need some counseling or something. I'm not advocating counseling. I'm just being sarcastic. Page 52. However, though no earthly man can state exactly who those 144,000 are, uh, we just read about it in the book of Revelation chapter 7. Thus there may be many more than 144,000. Yeah. We don't really know who the 144,000 Jews are, and there could be many more than 144,000 Jews. Yeah, maybe Santa Claus is going to come over later and give me a candy cane. Therefore, the 144,000, 12,000 times 12,000 times, and then he has a bunch of numbers listed here. Somebody crossed that out. This, this is a used book that I had. Uh, maybe referring to multitudes living in God's divine order, the manifested sons of God. <laughs> yeah. Continuing. Page 53. Another of their favorites is John 14, 2, 3, where Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go to and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, Jesus said, I will come again, not you will come to me. Okay. Um, see my note here? So why build mansions in heaven if nobody will ever go up to inhabit them? Unless the Father's house is here on the earth and there's mansions being built someplace mystically that we don't know about. Why build mansions in heaven if nobody ever goes up to inhabit them? Continuing. Page 53. This lack of consistency in the King James Version is very con is confusing. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess when you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you do look at the King James Bible as being very confusing. You know, Then, it, of course, he's got access here to the original Greek text. Oh, isn't that wonderful? A more accurate, consistent, and understandable translation might read as follows. So he just makes up his own Bible as he wants, you know? I mean, hey, you know. Oh, here it is. You know, I mean, just, uh, you know, Make your own standards in life, you know? Make your own standards. I mean, three inches can be here, it can be there, it can be there. You know, three inches can be whatever we want. It's wonderful. Uh, page 55. Um, it is also well to know that some other more recent translations of the Bible, and they list a bunch of junk here, do not use the words be accounted worthy to escape as in the King James Version. Most translations of the Bible agree with the Jerusalem Bible, Catholic Bible, which translates Luke 21, 36 this way. Quotes it. Okay? I mean, it's ridiculous. Some of the rapture's favorite teachers' uh, annotated Bibles and commentaries may make, make much of Enoch and Elijah who did, who did not see death to say that they are a type of the church being taken from the earth 
any rapture. But Jesus said ever so plainly and cl clearly that as the coming of the Son of Man it would be as in the days of Noah, Matthew 24, 37 and Luke 17, 26. Not as in the days of Enoch and Elijah. Also Enoch and Elijah were not removed because some tribulation was upon them. Rather God chose to end their lives on earth in this manner. Um, Enoch and Elijah had no type of a tribulation, type of bad things happening to them. This guy needs to read the Bible a little bit more. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 5 through 8 talks about here. And it says down here, you can, you know, I'm not going to read all this, it says, Neither can this scripture be referring to the church. Huh? So he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That, that's not the church there. Okay? Why not? How shall they hear without a preacher? Therefore the Christians cannot depart in a rapture. Um, again, the two witnesses are coming back. The 144,000 that are sealed by God in that time period. Jewish males. Um, there's a lot of people that are going to be around to preach the gospel. And I dare say that there is a lot of people. I know the Bible says God will send strong delusion to those who believe a lie, have pleasure in unrighteousness. I know that. But I do believe that there are people who are ignorantly going to these modern big, you know, worship buildings, Babel buildings, I like to call them. A lot of people are going there very ignorantly. And after the rapture happens, they're all of a sudden going to go, oh, wait a second here. And they're going to start figuring it out. Now, the ones that have, have heard the truth and they have rejected the King James Bible, they reject the truth of God's word, you know, those people there, yeah, God's will strength, send them strong delusion. But you will have a lot of people that wake up in that time period. But uh, let's continue here. We have page 70. He says, Scriptures make it so very obvious that God the Father is far more interested in getting heaven into you than getting you into heaven. Westcott. Brooke Foss Westcott, one of the two uh, devil-possessed liars that came out with the revised version of 1881, he made a statement the one time where he said that heaven is a state of mind. It's not a place, it's a state of mind. That's a satanic statement. All right? You can have heaven here on earth the glory of your earthly life. That's satanic. Down here he says, The scripture tells us clearly that we are to look for the appearing Christ, not the disappearing saints. Now look at that. We are to look for the appearing Christ. There are two Christs. The Lord and His Christ. And there's another Christ, the Antichrist. You're to look for the appearing Christ. Sure, if you're lost like Speed Wilson. Page 71. Origin of the rapture. Of course you know where he's going to go with this. With God's word so very clear on the fact that there will be, not be a rapture, where did this doctrine, opposed to the doctrine of 19th centuries, previous centuries, originate? It is a fact that no Christian churches, congregations, or fellowships existing prior to 1830 proclaimed a rapture doctrine. This thing has been, this lie has been perpetuated and perpetuated and perpetuated for years and years and years now. No one before 1830 and John Nelson Darby, blah, 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 blah. I've proved it time and time again. There were people in the second and third century that were writing about the rapture. All right. Ridiculous. Page 72. I love this too. He's quoting different people here and things. And he quotes Dale Moody. Um... Hello, his name was Dwight Lyman Moody. You see, people call him, for short, they call him D.L. Moody. Not Dale Moody. D.L. Moody. Dale Moody. That's not what's going on there. His name's Dwight Lyman Moody. Again, he's an astute Bible scholar, but he doesn't even know the man's, the correct spelling of the guy's name, of Moody's name. Look who else he quotes here. Love this one. Billy Graham. There's an authority. Page 74. The Word of God shows rapture to be one of those myths because Jesus to always told us plainly what he wanted us to know. Oh, uh, why did Jesus speak in parables then?
Look at this one. This is a good one here too. They exchange the truth of God for a lie. It's exactly what the NIV does. Accepting false doctrine and perpetuating, perpetuating it can have very serious consequences. I agree totally with that. And it's funny because he just did it right there in that paragraph. Just quoted the NIV and he's saying, if you accept false doctrine and perpetuate it, it can have very serious consequences. And it certainly will. Down here, God says in the NIV, you know, again quoting the NIV, page 78, by the year 2001, I trust the rapture doctrine will have departed from God's creation. Uh, sorry there, buddy. It didn't work. There are those of us that still hold to the King James Bible, hold to the teachings of God's pure word, and we know that the pre-trib rapture is Bible doctrine. Here you have page 83. As you may know, the King James Version of New Testament was translated from a Latin version, which was translated from the Greek language. Proof? None given. The Greek word Philippus, Philipsis, whatever, appears 55 times in the King James Version and is translated into nine different English words. Very confusing. This gives a much clearer understanding of what God is saying to us. Again, he tries to use this argument of uniform translation. Every time a Greek word shows up, it should always be translated the same way. No, it should not. That's not proper translation. Okay? The translation of a word is determined by the context in which it appears. Anybody that knows anything about Bible translation will tell you that. All right? Down here, there is no way you can make this say Jews. Except those days should be shortened, there should be no, no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake... This isn't the Jews. See the anti-Semitic thing here again? Okay, down here, it talks about tribulated. Kind of funny, I thought that was funny. Here he says about the deliverance of God's people. In the King James Version of the Bible, the Greek word metamorpho is translated, be changed, be transfigured, and be transformed. Again, confusion. You know, yeah, sure, it's confusion. Well, it's confusion if you're lost, like Speed Wilson. Page 89. With no rapture, many sacred false doctrines will also have to be scrapped and open a whole new world for some of scriptural truth and understanding to be explored. Gotta love that one. Do you realize what he's saying there? There are other doctrines that are going to have to be abandoned when you give up your belief in the pre-trib rapture? Absolutely true. Absolutely true. If you believe in eternal security for right now, okay, for a member of the body of Christ, if you believe in that, you have to give it up if you believe that you're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Take the mark of the beast, you lose whatever quote-unquote salvation you had. There are conditions on your salvation there in that time of Jacob's trouble. Today, no. Anyhow, let's continue here. Next page, page 90. Biblical revelations, knowledge, understand, will also multiply abound if we can destroy false doctrines. By now, it should be obvious that 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 54, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 are both talking about the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the transformation of the living biblical Christians. Amen. Well, that is what it's talking about, but it's talking about being called up to be with the Lord. Page 93, what is this mark seal of God? It is the Holy Spirit. Now look what he does here. He adds the word marked. Marked. When well, the King James Bible does not say that. So he has his reader believing that there's a mark that comes upon you. Hmm. Page 94, what is the significance of the phrase day of redemption to the biblical Christian? It is not day of rapture. Uh, well, not in, in the way it's spelled, no. But when the, the purchase of the, of the uh, you know, the redemption of the purchase possession, that's what it was. Redemption of the purchase possession, when that happens, that is when we go up to be with the Lord. That's what that is. So again, he's lying here. 
Page 94. Your soul is your mind, will, intellect, and emotions. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You reside in a body. Okay? Guy doesn't know what he's talking about here. Incredible. Without this biblical understanding of a three-phased complete salvation... Uh-oh. How about this? Please notice it is past tense for spirit salvation, present ongoing tense for soul salvation, and future tense for body salvation. Uh-oh. Ongoing tense for soul salvation? Works. Salvation. That's exactly what he's teaching there. What we must do. Now that we know by the Holy Scriptures we are not going to fly away to heaven in a rapture. You know, love, you got to love how he does that too. You know, He sets up all these false arguments and then he comes out and he says, Oh, now we know that we're not going to be raptured. And we don't know anything like that. Okay, You didn't prove your point. However, of all the versions of the Bible listed on the title page of this book, only the King James Version uses the word occupy. The other translations make it much clearer. Again, this, this guy has no standard. He has no standard of absolute truth but himself. He is a god in his own warped little mind. Look at what he does here on the next page, though. This is, this is really odd. We are to be witnesses for the Lord, comma, Jesus Christ. Why put a comma in there? Maybe it's a misprint, but uh, I just thought that was kind of odd. Uh... Again, he talks about God's capital W word. These guys don't understand that whole issue. Page 104. From this fact alone, it is obvious they have they had not gotten the fullness of the Holy Spirit promise of the Father when Jesus breathed on them. Uh-oh, where are we going here? The Holy Spirit baptism, the promise of the Father was initially given in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. Oh boy. You can search the scriptures and you will not find uh, you can search the scriptures and you will not find that the giving of the gift of the Holy Spirit baptism has ever ceased or ended. Uh oh. What about those who say that this gift of the Holy Spirit as manifest by speaking in tongues according to the scriptures is of the devil Satan? They should review and take heed of the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew three twenty nine, where he issues his most severe warning, saying he that shall blaspheme speaks abusively, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Holy Ghost never has forgiveness, or, uh, but is in danger of eternal condemnation. The old uh, charismatic trick again, where you say, if you try to expose me for lying and saying that I'm speaking in tongues when I'm not, uh, then, you know, you've blasphemed the Holy Ghost and you're not going to be forgiven for that. Ridiculous nonsense. Page 109. Peter the Rock, Catholic again, again, Peter is not the rock that the church is built upon. Jesus Christ is the rock. Water baptism, which is for the remission of sins. Well, not right now, no. Incredible. Each member needs the Holy Spirit baptism. Have you received the baptism, the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Give me a break. How does one receive the Holy Spirit baptism? First, read the second chapter of the book of Acts in a translation you can easily understand. you got to love that. May I suggest a few? The Amplified Bible, the New International Version, in book format, the New King James, the New American Standard, and the Catholic Jerusalem Bible. doesn't recommend the King James Version. You know, you might actually figure out the truth in there. The following is a prayer I have composed from the Holy Scriptures. If you will say it out loud, even if alone and truly believe it, you shall be saved. Thank you, little Protestant Pope. Page 112. The believers gathered at Cornelius' house were baptized in the Holy Spirit before they were baptized in water. Uh-huh. Here he recommends the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship chapter. A group of charismatics. Typical. Next page, page 113. 
After we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit baptism, we have not arrived, we do not have it all, but we have more than when we first believed. God is not through with us yet, no matter how much we speak in other tongues, prophesy or manifest the other gifts of the Holy Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians 12. You've not arrived. You're continually being saved by praying the rosary and keeping the sacraments. Oh, oh, excuse me, I meant by manifesting the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Page 120. If your soul is being sanctified, being sanctified by the power of the Holy Spirit baptism, you are in the process of keeping Pentecost. This guy's a closet Catholic, I'm telling you what. Uh, it goes through a bunch more stuff here. Like I said, we're not can't cover everything here. Page 136. Now you can see very clearly that the 70 weeks units of sevens have been fulfilled, no gap. Absolutely ridiculous. This guy just... Ugh. Another false doctrine which is widely taught and accepted is that the temple must be rebuilt in Jerusalem before Jesus returns. How will the Antichrist stand in the holy place? Matthew chapter 24 talks about it. How can he stand in the holy place if the holy place has not been built yet? Page 139. First, let us look at the word temple in the original Greek. Like he has access to it. He doesn't. Here's down here. He says, makes this and much more so very clear and concluded that the beast is a one world system which is to prevail during the tribulation period. The term man of sin, son of perdition, may be like referring to the beast of Revelation 13 as he. Huh. But it gets worse. Check this out. In this falling away, purging, cleansing, purifying, and purifying of the composite corporate body of the Lord Jesus Christ, those male and fin female of sin will be revealed, along with those male and females headed for destruction, perdition, that they may confess their sin before falling into eternal damnation, perdition. They sit in their physical bodies, the temple of God, opposing God, not led by the Holy Spirit, but depending on their own reasonings and exalting themselves and the temple, their body, and the satisfaction of the ego, even exalting themselves above God, who is to be worshipped, sitting in their bodies, temples proclaiming themselves to be God. They have fallen away into the world's trap of, I will do all things my way and to my pleasure and my glory. Thus they are saying, I am God and ruler in this temple. My body, by the power of my mind, will, and intellect, soul not allowing God to reign by the power of His Holy Spirit. Do you realize what you just read there? This guy is saying that these verses that are clearly talking about the son of perdition, the man of sin, the Antichrist, in other words, those verses are actually just in reference to wicked people. And they're, they're in the temple of God, which is their body. Lost people, their body is the temple of God. There's a problem there. But this body that they're in, the temple of God that they're in, they're sinning, so therefore they're not really saved and they're going to get judged. Incredible. Page 142. I hope you know that there is not one single scripture calling or naming a man Antichrist. Uh, yes, there is. And it says here, make clear that Antichrist is a spirit. Uh, no. Let me just show you a verse real quick on that. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, singular word, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Antichrist, right there, a singular word. It's a reference to the man of sin, the son of perdition. But this guy here, he says, I hope you know that there's not one single scripture calling or naming a man Antichrist. I just showed you one. This guy's ridiculous. The Antichrist is more than just a spirit. The false doctrine was with the most potentially damaging effect to Christians alive at the end of the age is the rapture, the physical removal of biblical Christians from the earth to heaven. It's not damaging. I've been over that thing before. It's just 
This book is ridiculous. Page 143 here, continuing, it says, The blessing is that our understanding of God's word will increase, but we must rid ourselves of these many blinding doctrines which change the truth of God into a lie. The rapture lie becomes obvious when we review the truth of God's word. Capital W again. No, it doesn't. The rapture is not a lie, and it becomes proven when we actually read the Bible. Next page. If you still believe that there will be a rapture, you still believe there will be a rapture, excuse me, you are surely on the road to Emmaus. And if Jesus came to walk with you, you would not recognize him because you are blinded by the doctrine that you are to be caught up to return to earth with him. It's not blinded. Okay, it's what the Bible teaches. This guy is such a pathetic liar. Consequences of the rapture doctrine. The sad consequences of the rapture doctrine are many, the following are a few of them. The rapture doctrine by implication says accept Jesus as the Savior of your spirit and go to heaven if you die or fly away to heaven if still alive. It makes heaven your blessed hope and creates a false security that you will be removed from the earth before the great tribulation. Heaven's not supposed to be your blessed hope? Do you realize how depressing it would be if you actually realized we're going to be staying right here on the earth. We're never going to go to be with the Lord in heaven. Never escape this wicked planet. That's not a blessed hope. I'm going to show you plenty of scriptures coming up here that prove that we go to be with the Lord. Okay, number two. The rapture robs you of attaining the full and complete salvation God has promised and prepared for you. Those having attained spirit salvation by accepting Jesus as their Savior have been taught they have it all and will receive their reward in heaven. Scriptures do not say that. Uh, yeah, um, when you are saved, you do have it all. You do have access to everything. It's just a matter of you staying in fellowship with the Lord, not to stay saved, but that staying in fellowship there with the Lord is He'll use you if you are staying in fellowship, if you are keeping your sins confessed, forsaken, you know, moving forward with your process of sanctification. The Lord will use you, and He will reward you. But this weird, warped, Roman Catholic charismatic type of a philosophy where you have to just keep on giving up more and more and more and more and more and you can eat, attain more levels of power and you can cast better spells and things like that. It's about what they're teaching too. Page 147. There is also a body salvation available through accepting Jesus as Lord. How very sad it is to stop short of so great and complete a salvation, spirit, soul, and body, by accepting the lie of rapture. Yeah. Two-thirds of being full gospel. I have the spirit and soul rebirth. I have been waiting for a better body. Uh, I'd rather not be full gospel. I don't want to be a fool. <laughs> Page 148. The rapture may cause believers to fulfill the accus accusation that you are so heavenly minded that you are no earthly good. Many believers are detached from national and world events. Oh boy. They won't even unite to protect their own rights as Christian citizens. We gotta bring back the Constitution. We gotta defend our rights and blah blah blah. Yeah, sure. Page 149. To create, support, propagate, and perpetuate the rapture, holy scriptures have to be ignored, distorted, taken out of context, and corrupted. That's what he's been doing the whole way through the book. I can, and, then, and then he comes out, you know, he commits the crime of perverting the word of God and then he comes out and he says you better not pervert the word of God so if you do you're a heretic this guy's nuts page 150 my challenge to anyone or any group who believes the rapture is to prove me wrong by scripture not by what reverend pastor or doctor so and so says but by scripture if anyone can show me scripture by scripture to be wrong on the rapture doctrine, their reward is $10,000. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to end this study now, and I'm actually going to come back here in another video, and I'm going to show you the scriptures that, in fact, prove that saved people go to heaven when they die. I'm going to show you plenty of scriptures. He said several scriptures. I'm going to give you more you know, than that. I'm going to give you plenty of scriptures that talk about dead saints going to be with the Lord at death. All right, in a few different dispensations too, by the way. So, you know, again, 
This book here, it does not prove that the pre-trib rapture is a lie. Just like a lot of these things, these attacks that these people come out with, doesn't prove anything. You know, it's just absurd, absolutely absurd. But see, these guys, like this liar right here, this Speed Wilson guy right there, they want so desperately to take you away from the simplicity of salvation. They want you to start working your way, enduring to the end to be saved and all this other stuff. That's ridiculous. All right? Just absolutely absurd. So that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to come back in uh, the next video here, and I'm going to actually show the proof that where do believers go when they die. I'm going to show the proof of that. So that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching.